bull or bear. I'm actually spinning the smallest coin I've ever spun, which is a 1990 Singapore 120th ounce of gold. And she comes up a bull. Well, let's we'll see what happens here. Good afternoon, folks. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. However, I do have the live Hillsboro in that came up. And I put this up because, wow, look at those clouds. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful out. 79 degrees. Um, the inlet, a uh, couple boats out there. You can't, what you can't see to the left of the lighthouse here is a lot of storm south of here. I'm up here. Actually, you can see me, right? See where the point is? There's me looking at you. <laughs> but uh, there's the lighthouse and uh, south of here, a lot of little storms and stuff over the ocean. I saw some boats sprinting north, but wow, what a just absolutely gorgeous sky that is. Look at those clouds. Well, all right, we're not here to talk about clouds, weather, whatever it is, you know, even though you know I'd rather talk about sometimes anything but uh, coins and precious metals. Hey, man, I do it for five days a week. So <clears throat> let's take a look and see what's going on here uh, with precious metal prices. Uh, and it's sorry about not getting a video done here for like two weeks. You know, I've had so much on my plate between working and family stuff. And, uh, and I know most of you are saying, hey, Brian, you used to do videos five days a week for, what, two years or something like that straight, never missing one. Boy, <laughs> that's tough to do. It's kind of like uh, retiring and going back to work now. Uh, but I'll get back there at some point. But uh, yeah, I get a lot of things going on. Of course, my arm finally healed up, if anyone cares. Uh, you know, I tore my uh, 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 what, distal bicep tendon, came right off the bone, had to have it reattached, and went out on my motorcycle for the first time uh, the other day and took a nice ride. Yesterday, actually, took a nice ride. All right, I'm, you're probably sick of me blabbing about my personal life here, so... Let's move on to, uh, again, precious metal prices, where we've been. I haven't talked to you in a couple weeks, and um, I haven't posted any videos like, wow, amazing, you're incredible, look at these prices. You know why? Because I expected these prices long ago. I'm sorry, i got to say it, but $2,500 is nothing really exciting to me uh, right now. I mean, it's nice to see, but I fully expected it. And here's the problem. Here's why it's such a... Uh, 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 I don't know, I don't know, and I'm not so excited about it. It's because I expected it long ago, um, and may, perhaps I should be more excited that uh, it, it, you know we're looking at all-time highs in gold. Uh, silver, not so much. Silver, not even close to its all-time. Gold keeps breaking its all-time highs, and silver does what? <laughs> Continues to stay almost a little bit uh, over half its all-time highs right now at 30 bucks. I mean, 50 bucks an ounce silver. Um, however, that's going to change pretty soon, and as you can see, platinum was up, the red-headed stepchild of the metals was up. Um, oddly enough, the uh, palladium is matching about the same prices, um, but we don't talk much about palladium. You know why I don't talk about palladium and don't follow it? Because I don't own a lot of it, uh, number one. Does it mean I should? I don't know, or shouldn't? I don't know. Uh, and the second thing is we sell so little. You ask any precious metal dealers out there, and they'll tell you that. You know, it's a percentage, maybe a one percent or whatever. I, I'm making that up, but uh, of their of their sales of other metals, especially gold and silver, <clears throat> platinum, you could say is a small percentage of sales as well. But uh, you know, I've been dealing in platinum. We still get some people uh, buying and selling platinum. But I got to tell you, platinum is the worst I've ever seen it as far as the retail environment and the retail people out there just don't own it, don't want it. I don't even know what drives platinum other than the crooked CME market and probably the London LBMA uh, <laughs> and the uh, bullion banks, the crooks at the bullion banks. But we're not going to get into that. We know all about that. I spent the last couple of years and Ted Butler did while he was alive explaining to you folks how these markets are manipulated at the COMEX CME group, the world's largest derivative crooked marketplace, in my opinion, in the world, um, with a useless uh, a CFTC that does nothing to... Uh, uh. So what do we've got here with precious metals? Uh, we've got big deal, 2500 big deal, 20 you know, almost $30 silver and platinum still kind of hovering in that, that area. Uh, and I'm sorry if I don't sound excited, but I'm not. I'm really not. Uh, and the reason that these metals haven't taken off as much as they, they, they should have... I mean, gold, I'm, I'm kind of okay with the trajectory of gold, but silver, um, no. I'm not kind of too happy with silver. But follow through with me. Follow through with me. Uh, I believe that, uh, again, as Ted Butler said, 
Um, and um, again, I kind of miss the guy. I miss reading his newsletters to you as well. But uh, I th believe he was one of the smartest guys in the industry as far as reading COT reports. You know, he could read a COT report like you and I read a comic book. Um, and uh, he was kind of my insight into a lot of the stuff. I got to find a good replacement for Ted. If you guys got any ideas of someone that does what he does and kind of believes the same thing that he believes, uh, let me know. Or not believes, but has the same evidence that he has and follows that same kind of uh, track. Uh, uh, I'd be curious to know who you listen to uh, other than Ted Butler. I <laughs> uh, hope you're not listening to Ted Butler still. Well, I guess you are. Anyway, sorry, got a little weird there. Um, but what Ted Butler talked about for years is the uh, uh, pants, the full pants down moment when, uh, uh, um, you know, think about it as we've always said here and I've always talked about for years and years, um, is that, or a couple years now doing YouTube videos, is that the uh, uh, silver is actually the dog and the, the paper derivatives, the options, the, uh, you know, that stuff is the tail. And for decades, the tail has been wagging the dog, meaning derivatives, the paper market has been uh, uh, controlling the dog, which is the physical, when it really should be the opposite. We all know that. We know that dogs uh, control the tail, not vice versa. Uh, but that's not the way it's worked in the silver market for years. Uh, however, uh, again, the full pants down moments basically means when they lose control of it. Uh, and, and you know what? Uh, uh, Ted Butler believed that there, there's two ways that the uh, bullion banks are going to lose control of the price of silver. One of them would be uh, that they would have all their shorts covered, that they would be in a good position, they would be at the least amount of losses in the precious metals business uh, that they could be. Or what he called the full pants down moment is when they, when they didn't uh, have their shorts covered and they got caught by surprise by a completely uh, crazy rising market. Um, and somehow, you know, the, the vindictive side of me hopes that, they, that the bullion banks and the uh, people that have been uh, 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 manipulating this, the bullion banks, uh, 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 the big four to eight commercials uh, uh, or so that uh, uh, have been manipulating these markets for years collusively, um, I kind of hope they get the full pants down moment where they lose a lot of money. But on the other hand, that's a realization that says that, you know, a lot of people have their money invested in these banks. Uh, uh, a lot of people would lose tons of money because of the bad, evil decisions by these people. So, uh, you know, one side of me kind of wants to see them get it stuck up their arses. The other side of me doesn't really because it doesn't get stuck up their arses. It gets stuck up their customers' asses, okay? Uh, so <laughs> there we are. But I believe we are getting close to that pants up, pants down moment. I'm not quite sure. Uh, again, T Ted Butler used to, I used to re you know, have him explain the reports to me and see who was sitting with the large positions out there, who was shorting, you know, and, and how much and how much they could potentially lose uh, in a rising market. Uh, but I haven't had that data in a little while. Uh, but here we are. Here we are uh, coming up on $30 silver. And I think that, uh, um, you know, from what I'm hearing out there is that there are shortages of silver, that it's silver is getting a little harder to uh, locate. And this is not really, you know, I think uh, Rafi Farber asked me if it had, a, you know, what I thought of the uh, uh, Wall Street silver movement and the silver rate movement and the effect that it had on silver. You know, and the truth of the matter is, as I've said it many times, is uh, physical retail stackers in the United States, we make up in the United States. Now, I'm not talking about China and India, where we might have a much larger situation, and I believe they do, much more buyers, and might even drive the marketplace a little more than obviously here in the U.S., but we don't have a lot of gold and silver stackers here. You know, overnight, in the course of 20 years, I believe, uh, we have kind of gone from this country that was uh, 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 very kind of fit, you know, it's kind of fit, I mean, I'm talking about, look, look at the, uh, J, uh, the uh, Bobby Kennedy speech the other night, too, talking about the, uh, uh, the health crisis we have in America. Well, we have, not only do we have a health crisis in America, we also have an economic crisis in America where, where uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. talks about uh, we've given our entire uh, uh, food system and our, our drug system and the uh, pharmaceutical system and the farmlands to uh, uh, 
these few big mega corporations, okay? And, and that it's been dangerous. It's had a horrible effect on uh, our overall well-being. Well, I believe the same thing is true with our economic markets, is that uh, most Americans have a wholesale given their entire life over to these mega corporations uh, who control and manage their money, you know, money uh, management funds and uh, Wall Street and the, uh, you know, and what we do, uh, uh, the uh, uh, gold and silver markets at the uh, uh, comics exchange, you know. Um, so uh, we, we allow these large mega companies to run these things. I mean, that's what we've been talking about with silver for years is that, you know, and Ted Butler as well, is that you've got a, a handful of large commercial banks that control the price of silver, and it has nothing to do with silver, you know, the dog. It has everything to do with them and their frickin' tail wagging the dog. But, w again, I, I think we're close to that point where there is not much silver out there available, and uh, I'm going to hear from some of the uh, uh, guys out there, well, you know, uh, my stacker, uh, uh, SD, has a lot of bullion, you know, on their website, and so does JM Bullion, and so does my favorite guy on website, or my local dealer's got plenty of silver, as do I, folks. But remember, the American stackers, the American people that buy gold and silver are such a small percentage of people out there, especially in physical, all right? We are such a small, tiny market. Um, and, and which brings up a point, once we start to see our products uh, flow back into uh, uh, the silver refineries to be made into bars for industry, that's when you know that silver is taking off. And I think we are at that inflection point here really soon. Um, uh, again, will it be a pants up, pants down moment? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to hurt them, but you know, hurting them really hurts uh, innocent people. All right. I beat that horse to death. Where are we going tonight on the opening? I don't know, man. I, coin says up. First time I spun a tiny little gold coin like that. Coin says it's a bull. We'll see what happens tonight. I kind of suspect we will see a bull market here. Uh, 25, 12. Uh, I don't know. Come on. It's going to kind of be fun. But overall, the trend is this, folks. See my little cursor there in the right hand of the screen? Boom, boom. Here's our trend. Dun, 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 dun. Upward, up, up, and away we go. Um, and I, I earnestly believe that um, once we, here's the thing with silver, um, if you've noticed and if you've been following for silver for years, it seems like a $5 cap on it. I don't know what it is, but you know, uh, $5 to 10, 5 to 10, 5 to 10, it fights that like area and it sticks between there. Then it was 10 to 15. And a lot of you old season people will remember this. Yeah, that's right. You know. Well, remember, it was like constantly try to, trying to fight to get above, get above 10, and then the next resistance level really was to get above 15 and stay above there. Next resistance level was 20. The next one was 25. And again, on a macro level, if you've been following these markets like I have for years and years and years, and you watch it five days a week for decades and decades, that's kind of what I have noticed is that there is that little $5 mark. And with silver, you know, the bottom, the bottom, you know, in the upper end of the uh, regular trading ranges. I'm not talking about when it went parabolic uh, in 2012, probably for natural reasons, until JP Morgan's like, slimy bastards got involved with it and knocked it out. Uh, but uh, that's <laughs> my opinion and a different, and an opinion of people much smarter than me. Uh, but, uh, uh, and 1980 market, which would equate to like, you know, what, two or $300 silver now, at least because of inflation adjusted. Uh, but, uh, uh, silver is just traded in these little $5 ranges, and they've been nothing but the play thing for these big uh, commercial banks uh, to, to just churn money uh, year after year through their collusive behavior. But anyway, $5 marks. And what, where am I getting with this? 25 to 30. See, folks, you see this little thing we're going through right now? And uh, once we bust that 30, I think we're in our new bottom level, which is 30 and 35. I'm not even talking about, like I said, when it starts to go parabolic, which I think it will. And when I say parabolic, I mean when we get that big, big instant line upwards in the charts, like boom, like that, uh, that happens like each night, boom, like this, and boom, you know, anyways, boom, <laughs> adding my own flair in there. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, until we get to that point, which I've been calling a parabolic morning or our oh shit morning, uh, I think we're going to see this... Uh, uh, a constant uh, uh, move and uh, once we stay above this $20 mark and start bumping around that $35 mark again till we hit that parabolic stage um, I believe we're going to see the same thing it's going to bounce between 20 and 30 
Um, but I, I, once that happens, once we're bouncing that twenty to thirty dollar range, you know, again, goodbye twenty five dollar silver. Um, and the same thing. Remember when it was twenty to twenty five, goodbye twenty dollar silver. Remember when it was fifteen to twenty, goodbye fifteen dollar silver. Uh, look at it that way, folks, and kind of in a big picture kind of way. That's the way I've been looking at it. Boy, long video today. I kind of got a little winded there, or got some wind there. Um, you know, markets are kind of like this just surprises me that, but it shouldn't surprise me. You know why? Because when you throw endless money into uh, these kind of markets, you know, uh, I'm not a stock guy. I'm not a stock guy at all. I don't know much about stocks, but my basic understanding of stocks is like most people is that you buy a company that makes really good products. I mean, maybe this is old school. Maybe I'm just kind of stupid and I, I don't know the new, the new way of trading stocks or the new way it actually works which it is there's a new way it works because as i'm going to explain my thought is stocks should go up because they make a great product you know um, and they're selling a lot of product and people want to buy their product so you want to buy a company that's doing well and selling a lot of product what i don't understand is that that's really not the case with a lot of uh, uh, stocks out there uh, the stocks are kind of like Forgive me if I'm wrong, and can some of you guys explain this to me? Um, stocks seem to me more like a Ponzi kind of deal, where not a Ponzi deal, but where the reason they go up in value is because investors just buy their stocks and just keep throwing more money at them, all right? Um, not because they make great products and not because they're selling the shit out of those great products. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm just amazed. And where else do you put your money? I think that's the only reason that stocks and bonds and stuff are going up because where else would you put your money? All right. Well, obviously not in gold and silver. <laughs> you know, if one percent of uh, 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 Wall, or if one percent of uh, you know U.S. investment monies, or maybe two percent, a couple percent of uh, U U.S. investment monies went into gold and God forbid silver. I mean, we'd see doubles, triples, quadruples. I don't even know. Someone do the math for me. Uh, but I'm really surprised that uh, 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 these markets are just in the green consistently. I'm talking about the Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. Uh, crude oil, I'm surprised that it's not way above $100. But if the crude oil markets are anything like silver and gold markets, where you've got these big commercial banks going in there, you know, the tails wagging the dog, then that's probably the same thing with crude oil. Uh, because, uh, hmm, I don't know. But then again, there's so many factors with oil and stuff. I'm on, my understanding is that, uh, 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 I don't even know how that market plays. All right, let me get out of there before I just start, start talking about shit I don't really know about. And I fully confess, I am not a stock guy. Uh, what am I going to get into? Well, here in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, 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 my X and Twitter site, which I really having a great time. want to kind of mention a few people that I follow. Why not? It doesn't hurt. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, 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 some prices, what you should pay and you shouldn't pay. So hold on here with me, folks. And, uh, well, there's some more prices, what you should and shouldn't pay. Okay, let's X that out. And then we're kind of going to get into the end of this video and stuff. Uh, maybe I'll even throw in a little politics here on Zero Hedge. Uh, but meanwhile, well, let's get into a little bit of politics with Zero Hedge here. Uh, <laughs> what's going on out there since I talked to you two weeks ago? This is a... Um, I, you know, I don't think it's a major surprise. I don't really think anyone's surprised with this, but I was, when I listened to the speech, when I listened to uh, 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 Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s uh, uh, speech this week, I was kind of blown away because, and I was blown away in the manner thinking that, you know, he spoke a lot of truth. I mean, that's, you know, no one, whether they like him, well, no one that hates him is going to say that, but uh, uh, they know it in their hearts. But the man spoke, that's why they hate him more. Uh, the man spoke the truth, all right? Whether you support him, you like him, you hate him, he spoke the truth. And I think that rang really loud with a lot of people, including myself. If you didn't watch the entire speech, I highly recommend it to you, especially, you know, after the first third of it, you know, where he talks about his staff and his crew and thank you, thank you. After you get into the two-thirds of it and the rest of it, it, it was amazing. It really was. Because it spoke to me in saying that this is the way, you know, our politicians should be speaking to us with truths. Uh, with real issues, um, and uh, you know, I got to hand it to the man. He did a great job as far as that speech went, and 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 addressing the real truths in this country. 
Um, and let me kind of move along here. This is just plain sad. Uh, uh, arresting this guy. This is where we got big issues, folks. We've got free speech issues uh, uh, that are happening across the globe, and they're trying to push that here. And uh, trust me, trust me, they are trying to push that here. They're trying to stifle your speech. If you know anything, you'll know that the big tech companies were involved in that uh, during uh, 2020 and during the election stuff, um, especially the one I'm kind of talking on right now. Uh, well, not X, but the uh, alphabets. Uh, they uh, uh, are huge, uh, uh, hugely complicit in uh, uh, cracking down on free speech uh, across the world. Uh, again, I think except for X and maybe Rumble, uh, but you know, I have a love-hate relationship with this particular forum on, I'm on right now. I really do. I detest using it to some way, and even in my business I do detest using it uh, because I know the power that they have and what they do with it. Uh, but uh, I am finding myself more on X, uh, by the way. Again, I'm not on any other the social uh, media platforms, including Facebook. Fuck that zucker, in my opinion. Uh, I was booted off there for uh, uh, saying truth as well. Uh, and, but putting people in prison for it. This is what you got going on, folks. And let me remind all my friends out there, is there's a reason we have a Second Amendment. And, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of quote, Oh, who's that comedian? Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle said, there's a reason we have the Second Amendment. The reason we have the Second Amendment, it's in case the First Amendment fails. So very, 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 you know, funny, and but, uh, you know, very pertinent there. Uh, the fattest states in America. This is something that, uh, um, you know, it, it really didn't occur to me. But if you, again, listen to Bobby Kennedy's speech, uh, junior speech, he, you know, the numbers that he was talking about economically that costs this country and it's, and, and it's rivaling the uh, uh, military industrial complex in our military budget is incredible and it has to do with really, uh, you got to watch it man, about the obesity and about the, uh, 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 all the childhood diseases we're seeing and again folks this is happening in such an accelerated way over the last few decades and maybe I should say four or five decades but even more so over the last decade or so. Um, by the way, this is ZH I'm looking on. It's just kind of giving me ideas what to talk about. And most of you say, hey, talk about politics, Brian. What's your thoughts on this stuff? Well, I'm going to give them to you a little bit today. Um, I just wish there was peace in all these countries. I hate to see war anywhere. But, you know, I have a hard time feeling sorry for uh, uh, people that strap bombs to their children, you know. But I also have a hard time feeling sorry for politicians that have allowed these issues to fester for decades and decades and decades and not do anything about it. So there is a, uh, I, I do, yeah, you can kind of say I'm a centrist in this issue when it comes to war. That includes the one that we have going on uh, over in uh, uh, Ukraine and uh, uh, with Russia. You know, I'm a centrist on this, where I believe that, uh, um, well, actually, you know, I think, <laughs> Let's not go into that because Bobby Kennedy talks about exactly what happened with Ukraine and Russia, and it has a lot to do with what we did over there. Uh, but again, watch his interview. It was excellent. Or not the interview, but his speech was excellent. Um, psh, bullshit. Excuse me. Doesn't surprise me, you know, and uh, because, you know what, such a small percentage of our, our our community and our world out there is this, you know, our, our uh, LBGQT are uh, uh, gay, such a small, small, small percentage uh, of them are. And you know, my, my belief in life is, you know, do whatever makes you happy, just don't make me pay for it or push it on me or anything like that. Uh, I'm cool with that, you know, and I have a lot of good friends that are in that community as well. Uh, but you've got a small, small group of activists and a small group of people that are trying to push this on the entire world. And I think it has more to do with uh, uh, just creating a divisive community out there. Besides having the red and blue parties, which are losing people fast, that was the old divisive uh, matter. Get one party in the blue team, one party in the red team. That was the old way of uh, creating a divisiveness in America, besides wedge issues. The new way of div creating divisive uh, device in America is this kind of stuff right here. Um, and I really believe that. Uh, poor Britain. Poor, my poor British friends out there. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel for you guys, you know, your government, uh, you know, our government's bad here, uh, in my opinion, and the bureaucracy and the deep state that does exist uh, in the form of uh, media, the alphabet agencies, and uh, uh, big money. 
Uh, but poor Britain, poor the tiny little beautiful little country with great freaking people uh, overall are being run by a 1% uh, a, a of the population of morons uh, and uh, 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 Marxist over there. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> all right, I said it, there we go. Uh, people like this really should not be working at our universities. Why anybody would allow people like this to work at our universities just blows my freaking mind, okay? Um, you know, again, the problem with governments, especially UK and, and what's happening with our government, and probably and the, definitely the problem you've got in universities is you've got the 1% of crack fucking pots running it, all right? These crackpot, divisive, angry, Marxist, socialist, progressive assholes running these things, all right? So that's what's going on. Um, Why'd Bangladesh lie about India being responsible for latest floods? Uh, well, that's what countries do. That's what big countries do. They lie. <laughs> um, let me see. That doesn't surprise me right there. Uh, legacy. Well, anyway, let's kind of, I, I think I talked enough. Oh, I didn't talk enough. Um, here we go. Here's, here's some about talking enough. Here's a person, in my opinion, that, uh, um, boy, I think he, he should, <laughs> I mean this in a satirical fashion and manner. Uh, you know, something along the lines of a virus or a disease that involved hemorrhoids uh, and uh, uh, of the mouth and hemorrhoids of uh, where they should be. Uh, uh, massively inflamed, itchy, horrible. Um, boy, I'd sure like to see some people get that. <laughs> Again, that's just comedy, folks. I'm being satirical. Or am I? <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think so. Speaking of speaking of this, let's move over to Mr. Musk's uh, 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 free speech platform here. I want to kind of talk about uh, a couple things. Boy, man, I can't it can't tell you enough to watch the watch that speech if you haven't. All right, let me go into my new favorite platform, which has been uh, X. I mean, uh, uh, it is not. You know, they have not stifled speech out here. You're allowed to say the things that uh, you're not allowed to say on uh, fucker zuckers. Uh, uh, but again, I say that because I can't stand the man because uh, I used to support that platform all the time. I was on there for 12 years and I get kicked off for telling the truth, folks, on that platform. I did. Uh, but anyways, all these friends, all these people, I, I, I kind of miss it. But uh, uh, And there is emotional damage, too, when you get kicked off a major platform, when you have friends all over the world and you can't access it again. Uh, I understand that because I went through it, all right? Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, uh, Zucker can get that same hemorrhoidal problem in both sides of his body. I'm being funny. <laughs> it's, it's satire. Uh, uh, to the extreme degree is all because that's all he is. is a, all right, anyways. Uh, I'm very impressed with X, by the way, so far, and I'm sure they got their issues. Uh, and let me kind of show you who I've been following out here. I don't know if many people do that or if I should do that, but uh, here's my profile right there, Brian Kuzmar. Again, having a lot of fun out here. Trying to post my videos out here as well because I don't have to worry about posting my videos out here, whereas I do on this particular platform, I think, just depending on what I say. And I also really highly believe that on this platform, that on the, on the Alphabet platform that you may be listening to me on, uh, uh, that I am uh, uh, kind of pushed down in the rankings. My stuff is not out there. Again, because I'm somewhat political as well, as you know in the past, and uh, I wane. I go from being political to nothing. So anyway, you can see some of my posts out here if you want, um, and some of the people that, uh, uh, yeah, that's me. That's my post right there. I admit it, uh, but I believe that. Uh, but I, what I wanted to show you is some of the people that I'm following, and uh, uh, where we go? Uh, Post uh, 95, 363 followers. Yeah, I know, I'm nothing. <laughs> I'm nothing. Uh, I could have been a contender. Uh, but uh, uh, I've got uh, a couple people I'd like to follow. Stock Sh uh, Salmon, he's good friends with VBL. Uh, Vince, uh, who I like to follow. You can see Hickok45, uh, Robert Malone. War Monitor has been really cool to follow. Uh, if you want information on you know, the other side in that Ukraine-Russian uh, war. Uh, if you want to get information you're not getting from Western media, kind of, uh, in, in, well, not Western media, hold on. He, he's kind of on both sides of that, so he's an interesting place. I think there's a guy called Bebo out there that does that. Uh, libertarian candidate from a couple years ago, Ali G. I thought he was funny as hell. Anyway, one of the guys I like to follow. And of course, you know, I'm a, a uh, Ron Paul fan. Also like some of the stuff, uh, 
Oliver Stone did. And some of you saying, did I just see Ralph Nader on there? Yes, you did. And I'll tell you why. I met the man uh, in, at an airport in Southwestern Airlines, standing in line when he was running for president. His shoes were older than I was. I don't even know how old he is now. Uh, his leather patent, black patent leather shoes, he wore the same. If you remember how he dressed them, you old school guys. Uh, but he was super nice. I met him. I stand in line next to him on the Southwestern Airlines. Like, he's in coach, right? Um, and I uh, talked to him for a little bit. Super, you know, again, super approachable. Uh, that's why I have him on there. Um, of course, I follow uh, Elon Musk, O'Keefe Media Group, and uh, Jesse Colombo. Uh, all these guys right here. Bill Ackman. I uh, just kind of want you to see that, you know, I'm not out here just doing political stuff as well. Um, Keith Weiner, I think, yeah, he's from Monetary Metals, um, and uh, that's a friend of mine right there who's a local commissioner here in town. Uh, Chris Marcus from Arcadia uh, Economics. I, um, I'm actually looking forward to maybe talking with him sometime and meeting him sometime. I think he lives down here in my way. Uh, who else? Bob Coleman, very smart guy, good friends with the VSB. I kind of follow him because he's a free speech guy. And what's not to like about him? Jim Cramer, don't ask me why I do, but I do. Uh, Rafi Farber, did an interview with him. Love his uh, YouTube channel uh, and his stuff. And uh, a very smart man right here, Peter St. Onge. I think I pronounced that right if I didn't, forgive me. Uh, also follow Mr. Sheckman out there too. Uh, by the way, if you're looking to buy gold, silver, and platinum and any type of metals, call me at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. We'll beat all the big guys out there, all the respectable guys, even guys like Andy, who I respect a lot. <laughs> and we'll beat the uh, big guys like SD, JM, and, and, and the other guys. Now, remember, we are a brick and mortar, um, but we will ship on larger deals. Hey, don't ask me why. Andy just reminded me that I need to advertise myself more here. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> Eric, uh, also a very young, uh, astute young man that uh, uh, follows the Chinese markets on gold and silver. Uh, I like following him. He posts some funny stuff out there. Sierra Legacies, a follow of mine for many years as well on my uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, what else we got there? Yeah, you can see Rick Rule. I think he's a very smart, intelligent guy. I like to follow him. Kathleen Tyson. Um, gets into the more political stuff like that. Uh, uh, former capital banker and author of the multi-currency uh, mercantilism. And uh, of course, you know, everybody follows uh, Elon Musk. Don't ask me why I follow Zuck. Maybe just to uh, trash him when I can get a chance. By a uh, friend of BBLs that's very in tune with the Chinese markets as well. Uh, wow, I'm going over my whole list over here. Uh, but uh, CFTC, of course, I keep an eye on it. I, again, I just troll these excuse my language they deserve to be trolled by the way if you want to copy their addresses please troll them uh, they deserve it Gary Gensler worthless piece of anyways uh, where are we are we're kind of get down here James Rickard Alistair McLeod I'd like to follow him he's a great guy to follow uh, he does some great uh, writing and stuff I've been reading his stuff for years and some of it we used to read on the uh, uh, videos I did for a while Peter Spina and Goldseek Lynn Alden uh, and there we go, Tom Lugo. Where is Vince, VBL? I guess I missed him up here, but you know he's always in my uh, uh, feed here. Let's just kind of see where we're going. All right, well, anyways, I guess I shared enough of my uh, uh, who I watch and who I follow, but I can't tell you enough how much I kind of really like this system, and I feel safe here. Uh, and again, if you take a look, you can see that I have been posting some of my videos, even though they're down the line here, including some of my... Uh, 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 political views as well. Okay, got to do that. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into last week's video, which was, are you, two weeks of video. I'm sorry, man. I do apologize. Oh, apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, sip of coffee here. Cheers. Are you paying too much for your silver and gold coins? One of my lowest count videos, title sucks. Again, I, I'm a firm believer that clickbait titles, uh, you know, gosh darn it, as much as YouTubers hate them. You got to come up with something creative to get people to click your videos. Otherwise, you get this 981 views on a video that I believe that had some good content because most people pay too much for their gold and silver. And by the way, if you're looking to buy gold and silver, check with me at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. We'll beat the locals and the online guys uh, uh, on larger deals. But uh, uh, <laughs> where's my advertising again? Are you paying too much for your gold and silver coins? Very few comments to uh, respond to here. So, Michael Matthews, here you go. Cheers to you, my brother. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, here's my coffee right here. Thank you for watching. Uh, Silver Liner, uh, one of my longtime uh, uh, subscribers as well. 
Uh, if you're going to do a day trade silver, it has to be paper silver. I've done it many times before. Yet, yeah, you're absolutely right. I talked about in this video about doing day trading. If you want to day trade gold and silver, um, watch the video if you want to know more about that. There's, you can't do it with physical. You can't do it. It's impossible even for me to do it properly. Um, thanks, uh, Silver Line. I hope everything is well with you, sir. Uh, Michael says, first time I've seen or heard of your company. Always great to have options. I do go to site and see where we can place orders and pricing. How does that work? Uh, Michael, again, my website is just really a brick and mortar website to my store. A little bit about us, post some of our videos on there. We do not have an online website. Uh, it is not my business model, nor do I think I could competitively do it with people like Esty, who have spent millions in research, millions and millions and millions in research, time and effort to build these kind of operations they have. But I can do brick and mortar way better than those guys, way better. So, and there's no better than brick and mortar when you can talk face to face. This is why I'm always telling you guys, go out and find yourself a good local dealer if you can't deal with me uh, before you go online and go to the online guys. Uh, and for you big whales out there and you larger guys are buying large amounts of gold and silver, you can call me. Uh, I can do it in the old fashioned method and uh, uh, still get you a great price, uh, secure delivery and all that good stuff. Uh, Mark Hall, cheers my friend. Thank you to another longtime subscriber. Love you guys. Uh, guns, fishing, coins, welcome to my world, <laughs> and girls. Uh, i got to get over my way. You are always welcome here, sir. Make sure you call me. Anybody that's coming to visit me here in the store, please uh, call to make sure I'm here uh, or if I'm going to be here because I'm in and out all the time. My life is like dragged from one, you know, from family to this and to this and this. Uh, so, yeah, always call before you come in. Land Shark, another longtime subscriber. If it drops another dollar, maybe pick up some of the 10 outs near your bars. Nadir bars. Uh, but you got to beat JM. I do, sir. I do. Thank you, sir. God, all my long time, yeah, you know who your friends are. Uh, gold and silver, thank you. Uh, and thank you, sir, ma'am, whatever it might be, and or kitty. <laughs> uh, I've got a SIG 365 over 1,000 rounds, no man malfunction. Yeah, I was just explaining in my video that I just got a new SIG uh, 365 XL um, with a compensator on it to replace my five shot Smith & Wesson a hammerless revolver that I've been carrying around forever. That, in, in my in, my in-store local gun is is my 45. Uh, you know my Colt Combat Commander uh, 45 uh, uh, lightweight model. I can shoot that thing blindfolded. I can, you know what I mean. And I'm fast with it and I'm accurate. That's my in-store and my kind of close-up gun. Uh, my around town gun uh, used to be the five shot revolver, but I've since moved into the 365. Never been a big nine millimeter fan, but. I'm there now, okay? You guys got me finally. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, I don't want to tell you about all my weapons, so we'll get into that. Maybe we'll do a weapon show. Hey, weapons and gold, golds and guns. Hey, that's from Tom Lugo, actually, another good friend on X. Uh, Luago, Lugo, sorry, I hope I didn't hatch that name. If you ever make it over to Belfast, I get your pint of Guinness. Oh, gosh, I, I would love to. I, Rory7511, uh, i love to. And that might be a possibility someday. If, and if you ever come to Florida, you definitely give me a shout, all of you guys. Uh, H Juice 23s, I agree with you on platinum. Apparently, funds are going short on palladium and platinum, and a handful of TAs are posting on Twitter that it's going lower in a stage way, so it's cheap. Enough. Yeah, uh, I think platinum's a great uh, deal, and uh, thank you for bringing that up again, H Juice 23. Um, thank you, Hagler the Holder, Hodler, uh, one of my uh, long term viewers as well. I really appreciate it, and I'm enjoying the new Pew Pew. <laughs> pew Pew, Pew Pew. <laughs> Uh, Christopher, what's up, dude? Long time, God, all you long timers, man. Thank you. So nice. You guys are great. I uh, really don't mind the spread on AGs or, or buffaloes. Can uh, coins of the realm are very liquid and pose. Yeah, exactly true. Uh, the only thing, uh, you know, again, I just not a big fan of the premiums. I'm always thinking, you know, it, you know, I can buy a burger, uh, get my gold, uh, get a cheaper gold, and plus a burger and a beer for the same price. Uh, but I'm cheap like that. Uh, Chris Fetter says another great one. Thank you, Chris. Good to see you posting. Another long time. Oh, long time. Wow, look at you guys. Uh, Zane Underwood, Brian, my silver and gold slinging, coin spending, wine sipping, Florida friend. How the hell are you? Uh, thank you for all you do. Uh, I'm definitely part of your old shit, uh, your old shit uh, moment team. Uh, and then for you new guys, if you don't know what the old shit moment's going to be, it's going to be when we all wake up and silver is like way you know, sky rotting, parabolic, and you go, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And Mark Aurelius, a good customer of mine and also a long-term viewer. Uh, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. 
Uh, well, that's it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, folks. I'm going to hit my own like button there. Don't ever do that in front of you, but eh, I guess it's okay. Yeah, I'm going to unlike it. Maybe it's not. Maybe I shouldn't like myself. The ego getting too big there. Oh, boy, you should see the views walking by to the beach today, guys. <laughs> anyway, that's it. As I always say, think for yourself, question authority, because, uh, and question, most of all, question yourself, because we've been fed a whole bunch of lies, bullshit, some well-intentioned, some not, our entire lives that we may still continue to believe. So it's always best to question yourself, confirm what you, you know, and, uh, uh, and then it makes it easier for you to think for yourself and question others as well. All right, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. If you're ever looking to buy gold, silver, and platinum, give us a call. I've got my videos posted up on our website here, too. But remember, not a not a uh, order website. We're a brick and mortar. Uh, and we're open 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. And if you're looking to buy any gold, silver, and platinum, we will hook you up, man. Plus, give you good advice. And you can meet us eye to eye and shake our hands on top of it. Can't get that kind of service from an online website. Thanks, folks. Let's see what happens tonight, and uh, I hope to fully talk to you sooner than later. Bye now.